you came here for some incredible sounding, howling, screaming supercars, well, you're not going to be disappointed. Sit back, grab a pair of ear defenders and wind that volume up to number 11. Welcome to the Rich Reviews Top 5 Sounding Supercars Ever. We're going to have a little bit of fun in today's video and see if you can recognise the cars before we tell you what they are. You don't have to play along, but I think it'd be cool if you do. In addition, all the cars featured today in our top five have standard exhaust systems. They are not modified. The supercar we're featuring at position number five is one of the most iconic, groundbreaking, modern classic supercars ever made. The definitive daily usable supercar. An award-winning 4.5 litre naturally aspirated V8, 562 brake horsepower, 398 pound-foot of torque, 0 to 62 in 3.4 seconds with a top speed of 202 miles per hour. Can you guess what it is? In the comments below, put number five and the make and model that you think this car relates to. Here's a sound bite. course it's the groundbreaking iconic Ferrari 458. The 458 was in production from 2010 to 2015 and is the last naturally aspirated mid-engine Ferrari supercar and also the last car styled by the external styling house Pininfarina. Our 458 Spider is a late 2015 model and is now nine years old. We've personally owned the car for four years and it still provides that same level of exhilaration and performance every time we look at the car and drive it. During our four years of ownership of our 458 Spider, we put 12,000 miles on our car and we've taken part in some incredible events such as the Modball Rally and our European driving tour that took place last year in 2023. I'll pop some links in the description below for you. The 458 has that incredible blend of looks and power with power that you can explore on the UK roads without feeling the car's going to kill you. Well, not all the time anyway. The 458 is pretty much the supercar for every occasion. I mean, you just have to look at our European driving tour to see that. It has luggage space, it has the power, has the maneuverability for all sorts of terrain. It was great on the motorway. It was great around the twisty roads of those mountain passes. And it was great for luggage. We, there was two of us on that European driving tour and we could fit all our luggage in there. Yeah, it was a bit of a tight squeeze, but we still fitted all our luggage in there with all our camera equipment to provide all that coverage for you. You've got to check that European tour out. It is an incredible trip and still a life-changing event for us, especially because we took along that 458. And a great thing about the 458 is its soundtrack. Yes, you can put a straight through exhaust system on it and it sounds like an F1 car, but stock, the 458 sounds absolutely brilliant. And our 458 for comparison is purely stock. <laughs> With the 458 being the last Ferrari naturally aspirated mid-engine supercar and also the last Ferrari supercar styled by the external styling house Pininfarino, those two factors alone are two key reasons why the Ferrari 458 still has extremely strong residuals. There are some 458s being marketed at over list price even in these times of downturn in the economy. That's almost unheard of for a 15 year old non Vergiani Speciale Ferrari. The supercar we're featuring at number four has a naturally aspirated 3.6 litre V8, 425 brake horsepower, 275 pound foot of torque, 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds and a top speed of 186 miles per hour. This supercar has been superseded by the 430 Scuderia, the 458 Speciale, the 488 Pista and the soon to come 296 Vergiani Speciale. Can you guess what it is? In the comments below, put number four and the make and model of the car you believe this to be. 
Here's that howling, screaming sound bite. Now I'll be amazed if you didn't get that right. That is, of course, the amazing, unique sound of the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale. The 360 Challenge Stradale is the first ever Ferrari limited production V8 supercar and began the whole trend of the limited production series of track special supercars for Ferrari. And the 360 Challenge Stradale is very unique in that it was actually a challenge car converted for the road as opposed to most modern Vergiani Speciali Ferraris which are production cars that have hints or alludes to the track version or the challenge version. The 360 Challenge Stradale has very pure lineage directly relating to its Challenge Edition. So in effect, the 360 Challenge Stradale is the Challenge version converted into a production road going car for Ferrari. This is very different to the later versions of Vergiani Speciali for Ferrari supercars. For example, the 430 Scuderia, the 458 Speciali, the 488 Pista, etc. Those were, those were all production versions of the Challenge versions of the cars and they weren't conversions of the Challenge versions for production. <laughs> The 360 Challenge Stradale was only in production from 2003 to 2005 and is totally recognisable by its unique raspy exhaust note which is totally standard Challenge stock exhaust system. There is no mistake in what you're listening to when you hear a 360 Challenge Stradale on full chat on flyby. We were very fortunate to spend a whole day with a 360 Challenge Stradale helping Jay Amon Cars film his review for the Challenge Stradale and that was one incredible day. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give the video a like, give it a thumbs up, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. The car featured at number three is a naturally aspirated 6.3 litre V12 with 730 brake horsepower, 509 pound-foot of torque, 0-60 in 2.9 seconds and a top speed of 220 miles per hour. Now Ferrari state that this car has a top speed of 211 miles per hour but with, there's loads of evidence out there in the public domain to prove otherwise. Can you guess what it is? In the comments below, enter number three with the make and model of the car you think that this relates to. Here's the howling soundbite. If you're an avid viewer of our channel, you should of course recognize that groundbreaking V12 of the awesome F12 Berlinetta. The F12 Berlinetta was the flagship V12 GT for Ferrari and was in production from 2011 to 2017 in parallel with the 458, with both cars being the last editions styled by the external styling house Pininfarina. The F12 Berlinetta V12 Howl very much harks back to the V10 era of F1 and is very much a dialed up version of the 599 GTO Symphony. The F12 enhancements didn't stop there though. The F12's aluminium space frame is some 20% lighter than the outgoing 599 and they also wanted the F12 to have more supercar-like handling, therefore they changed the weight distribution to 54% rear and 46% front is also 30% more fuel efficient. 
The supercar we have for you at position number two is a very special Italian beast. It has a naturally aspirated 6.5 litre V12 pushing out 670 brake horsepower, 478 pound foot of torque, 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds and a top speed of 212 miles per hour revving to an incredible 8,000 RPM. That top speed is purely limited by the incredible amount of downforce generated by its massive rear wing. Can you guess what it is? Let me know in the comments below. In the comments below, enter the number two and the make and model you think this supercar references. Of course, it's the incredible raw sounding LP670-4 or as commonly known Murcielago SV. The Murcielago SV is the third installment of the SV range coming after the Lamborghini Miura SV and the Diablo SV and to be superseded by the Aventador SV and of course in the future possibly the Revuelto SV. The Lamborghini Murcielago SV was unveiled at the 2009 Geneva Motor Show and was only in production for two years with only 186 units of its planned 300 produced. The production line was cut short to make way for the awesome Aventador. The LP670 Murcielago SV was some £220 lighter than its predecessor Murcielago, the LP640, and lapped the Nürburgring in 7 minutes 42 seconds, which was a production world record at the time. It could be argued that the Murcielago SV is the pure definition of supercar. Striking styling incredible performance, low production numbers and that howling V12 engine. Absolutely zero compromise. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. Can you guess what's at number one? The supercar we're featuring at number one has an incredible distinctive sound coming from a naturally aspirated 4.8 litre V10 pushing out 553 brake horsepower, 354 pound foot of torque, 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, a top speed of 203 miles per hour and screams to an incredible 9000 RPM. This supercar was first conceived in the year 2000 when Toyota engineer Haruhiko Tanahashi and his colleagues drew out the raw design concept on napkins while sat at a table. Can you guess what it is? Let me know in the comments below. In the comments below, enter the number one and then make a model that you think this car references. <laughs> is the unmistakable sound of the Lexus LFA. The LFA is the second in the F-Series produced by Lexus, the luxury car division of Toyota. Due to the cost of this being a no-expense spared luxury Toyota supercar, there was extensive backlash at board level. It was only approved when a special meeting went forward with 100 board members to sign off this supercar with the single caveat that only 500 units would be produced and 50 of those would be Nürburgring Special Editions. 
The first LFA rolled off the production line on December the 15th, 2010, and for the next 500 days, one LFA was produced every single day until the production line closed on December the 14th, 2012.